You've all heard of this term that is GDP. GDP refers to the sum total value of all the goods and services that are manufactured in a country. Now that might sound like quite complicated, but it's not so complicated because the formula is quite easy to remember. GDP can be calculated by taking the consumption, the investment, the government expenditure, plus the exports of a country minus the imports of a country will give you the GDP value. Now let's take for example the first part there that is consumption. Now in Thailand, one of the largest automobile manufacturers would be Toyota. Every car of Toyota that is sold is going to contribute to the GDP of the country. And then you have investment. Investment here, for example, let's take Toyota again. If Toyota were to expand its factories, if they were to in fact add more locations where they want to manufacture their automobiles, that as well is going to improve the GDP of Thailand. Moving on, I refer to government expenditure for any country their biggest expender would be the government itself. So the government would spend its money on various activities, let's say for example healthcare, providing benefits to its citizens, all that would add to the GDP value. And then of course you have the exports. So all the goods that are manufactured in Thailand would be leaving Thailand and bringing in dollars into Thailand and that will contribute to the export value. And then you have the imports, goods that are bought by Thailand from various countries across the world. So all this, if you were to add together, you're able to come across the big value that you see here, that is the GDP of Thailand, that is $387 billion. Let us understand how to find HCF and LCM of two numbers. For this, you need to know how to find prime factorization of a particular number. Say every composite number can be written as the product of its prime factors and this type of factorization we call it as prime factorization. For example, we will take 15. 15 can be written as 5 into 3. So if you can express 15 as product of 5 and 3, this type of factorization is called prime factorization. Let us take one more example. 48. 48 can be written as 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3. So 48 is expressed as the product of prime factors and this type of factorization is called prime factorization. Let us understand the meaning of the terms HCF and LCM. HCF, highest common factor, is the biggest number that can divide given two numbers. And LCM is least common multiple, is the smallest number that can be divided by both the numbers which are given to us. Let us understand how to find HCF and LCM of two numbers with an example. Say we have to find HCF and LCM of 15 and 20. First step is to prime factorize 15 and 20. 15 can be prime factorized as 3 into 5. Then 20 can be prime factorized as 2 into 2 into 5. Clearly, it common factors between these two prime factorization is 5. Therefore, 5 is the biggest number that can divide 15 and 20 both. Therefore, 5 is HCF of these two numbers. Then how to find LCM of these two numbers? So you can clearly see the prime factorization of these two numbers. 5 is the common factor and remaining factors are 3, 2 and 2. So if you multiply them, 5 into 3 into 2 into 2, we get 60. Therefore, LCM of 15 and 20 is 60. Let us study some properties of triangles. Triangle is a closed plane figure made up of three sides. It has got three angles. Let's consider a triangle A, B, C. A, B, B, C and C, A are three sides of the triangle. It has got three angles, angle A, angle B and angle C. So interesting fact about these three angles is when we add all these three angles, we get 180 degrees irrespective of its shape as well as size. So angle A plus angle B plus angle C of this triangle is 180 degrees and this we call it as angle sum property of the triangle. 
This angle sum property of the triangle is used to find the missing angle in a triangle. Let us take an example to understand this. Say we have triangle ABC with angle A 60 degrees, angle B 50 degrees and angle C is missing. We know angle sum property of the triangle. Angle A plus angle B plus angle C is 180 degrees. Angle A is 60 degrees, angle B is 50 degrees plus angle C gives us 180 degrees. Then 60 plus 50 is 110. 110 plus C gives us 180 degrees. So angle C is 180 minus 110 that is 70. So angle C is 70 and this is how we find the missing angle in a triangle. The marketing mix is a set of four variables which needs to be taken before launching a new product. These variables are also known as four P's of marketing. These variables are important for a firm for making strategic decisions and also for smooth running of a product or organization. What is marketing mix? It consists of four variables, the product, price, place and promotion. Product and marketing mix, what the company actually manufactures. Product is one of the most important factors a company considers before making any marketing plan. Second variable is pricing. Pricing of a product depends on a lot of different variables. Major consideration of pricing are costing of the product, advertising and marketing expenses, and also any fluctuations in the market. Third, place in the marketing mix. It refers to the distribution channel of the product depending upon the nature of the product. If it is a consumer good, it needs to be available as far and wide as possible. Whereas if it is a premium consumer product, it needs to be available in selected stores. The fourth and the last variable in the marketing mix is promotion, which depends largely on product and pricing decisions. If the product is completely new in the market, it needs product awareness program, whereas if a product is already existing in the market, it needs brand recall promotions. The functions of organization can be divided into various parts. First can be marketing, human resource, finance and production. Human resource is a very important function of an organization also because nowadays the attrition rate of many organizations are high. The reason behind it is the organizational or the human resource policies are not appropriate enough so that people can stay in that particular organization. So because of that understanding human resources of the organization becomes very important. Human resource itself is managing men of the organization tactfully so that the organization do not come into any loss or they do not bear any losses. In that, the functions of human resources are again divided into various parts. We can point them as, first can be recruitment of the people, second can be employee relationship, third can be compensation and benefits, and fourth can be giving them appropriate training and development programs. Now, human resource is very important why? Because each and every individual working in the organization has unique character. His skills are different. His capabilities are different. Her management expertise is different. The background is different. Education portfolio is different. Understanding all these and understanding them as a human being is very important for a HR manager. Here comes the roles and responsibility of human resource manager as to how they are managing each and every individual of the organization very carefully and tactfully. For which we have n number of functions for on which human resource organizations can work. Such or such functions can be first again the employee and employee relationship. Then can be training and development given by the organization. Third can be compensations and benefits. And at most important is how you are recruitment such people. Recruitment itself is very important in the organization. The reason behind it is you need to convert an opportunity into a source of employment for which the work of HR manager or the person is to understand capabilities of an individual and recruiting them in the correct way. That is staffing the people for the work they are best designed for. Second is the training and development which has to be given. Training and development for each and every individual should be given according to the skills of that particular person. The skills of that particular person should be first thing according to his educational background and then understanding and making them understand that all the individual goals for them can be subordinated towards the organizational goals. 
For this, the work of HR manager is to make them understand the organizational culture so that they can adapt in it very fast. Third can be employer and employee relationship. Not only employer and employee relationship is important, but the relationship of organizational people within their boss, with their superiors, with their peers, with their subordinate is also very important. The reason behind it is, when you have a good interpersonal relationship in the organization, the work becomes really easy. People enjoy doing work over there. That is why the person should have a lot of confidence on the employees of the organization. The next function of human resource can be compensation and benefits provided to the employees. The compensation and benefits provided to the employees can be medical benefits, maternity benefits, etc. For which employers should always be open to pat the backs of all such employees which are doing well for the organization, who have subordinate their individual goals for organization goals. According to their skills and capabilities and the work they have performed, proper hike and proper wages should be provided to the individuals. This will motivate the individuals and it will create more organizational capability. Now, to end up with the functions of human resource, I would like to say that human resource is not only managing men tactfully, but providing them with a paternal benefits plus maternity benefits, providing them with a good organization environment, workplace safety, then proper communication system, proper motivation, proper leadership. Together, it will create a beautiful environment for the organization and it would be a win-win situation for both employees and employers. Today, let us talk about cell. The cell is a basic, structural, functional and biological unit of all known living organisms. Cells are the smallest unit of life that can replicate. There are many types of cells. You will usually work with plant cell and animals. Plant cells are easier to identify because they have a protective structure called as cell wall which is made up of cellulose. Plants have the wall whereas animals do not. Plants also have organelles such as green chloroplast or large water-filled vacuoles. Chloroplasts are the key ingredients in the process of photosynthesis. Functions of organelles Cell wall made from cellulose strengthens the cell and allows it to be turgid. Cell membrane controls what enters or leaves the cell, selectively permeable. The cell nucleus acts like a brain of the cell. It controls eating, movement and reproduction. Cytoplasm – site of chemical reaction in the cell. Mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. They are organelles that act like a digestive system which takes in nutrients, breaks them down and creates energy-rich molecules for the cell. Chloroplasts are the food producers for the cell. Chloroplasts convert a light energy of the sun into sugars that can be used by cell. This process is called photosynthesis and it all depends on the little green chlorophyll molecules in each chloroplast. Sap vacuum contains the cell sap, acts as a store of water or of sugars. Think fast and talk smart. The key to a human existence is not just mere communication, but effective, spontaneous communication. Now, how does one become an effective communicator? Is it just by making sure you speak English? Or is it by making sure you use the right words and use it at the appropriate time? Communication is not just mere about sharing opinions, feedbacks and facts to one another, but making sure you eradicate the misunderstandings and how misjudgments could eventually arise in such sentences. And today, we're going to look into how these skills are going to be applied in your life for you to become spontaneous, effective communicators. As young students, I'm sure you look for the best in everything that you do, whether it's a life partner, whether it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or eventually it's the career that you want. And that's the same strategy that companies use today. It's not just about making sure you have the right aggregates today, but it's also to make sure you have the right skill sets. And when it comes to the skill sets, companies look for the complete package. 
because they don't just look at you and your aggregates they look at the bigger picture on how you would represent the company on a global platform english being a very strong communication language is something which everyone needs to know today and not just know how to speak but also know how to be spontaneous regarding this because more than speaking planned you need to be able to speak spontaneous and that's where we hope and we aim to make sure we focus on developing each one of you here today thank you what constitutes success it's a three factor formula also popularly called as the triangle of success where on both the sides you have knowledge and skills and also on the bottom you have attitude let's focus on all of these three factors individually first knowledge every subject that you go through in college and in school every book that you read it constitutes to knowledge knowledge in return build to what we call as wisdom and it is these two factors that influence our intellectual abilities and make us much more wiser day by day good books to your mind is exactly like good food to your stomach on the other side we have skills which constitute to all the life skills and the soft skills that are essential for the success of our future too skills such as communication confidence time management stress management you have to be a leader you also have to be a team player all of these can be possible by acquiring the right kind of skills which are instrumental and act as a catalyst for your future especially when it comes to meeting people winning people and working with them we here also primarily focus on your development of skills and make sure that you acquire the right kind of skills which will take you to the right place and get you the right things wherever you go and lastly the bottom of the pyramid it is attitude your attitude enables your knowledge and your skills to shine it is your attitude that helps you become a positive person or a negative person it is your attitude that is instrumental in terms of how you see the world and how you see your future the more you focus on the right side of the attitude that is your positive attitude the more positive you will become thank you our present and our future is largely dependent on two category of skills one are the hard skills or the technical skills and two are what are popularly known as soft skills considering that the human element in our personal and professional life never goes away it's extremely important to focus on people skills that is soft skills skills such as communication problem solving interpersonal skills and many such skills which help us better connect with individuals and that's where the most important need for training especially in soft skills arises soft skills can bring about a change change that matters training on these skills can bring about a huge advantage in your personal life and in your professional life we at skill acumen provide quality training solutions specially on soft skills for education institutions as well as for the corporates if you need the right skills we have the right people to provide you that let's understand capital structure today which comes under the topic financial management first understanding financial management is must for us financial management again is divided into two parts is a combination of two words 
first is financial second is management now the word financial is understanding and taking care of financial activities of an organization which also includes taking care of firm's organizational resources for example men material machinery money over here finance would refer to money part now when we talk of management management is all about managing things tactfully so whenever a organization tactfully manages resources of that organization that is money resources we say that it's a financial management activity now trying to understand capital structure under financial management capital structure itself is made of two different phenomena first is capital second is structure now capital refers to employment of funds or resources which is again money resources by members of the organization or partners of the organization over here organization can be a sole proprietorship a joint stock company a partnership firm or any other company understanding about structure a structure of anything refers to an organized way of building a thing over here uh, organizationally when we talk of capital structure understanding the financial needs of an organization employment of capital of an organization structuring it in such a way that we have n number of resources and maximum of profit it is the capital structure a capital structure again would be arranging the procurement of resources in an organization in such a way wherein company has highest of profits and minimum of losses a company whenever they are having highest of profits it should be done economically so that we can understand capital structure of any organization is a blend of debt and equity debt for an example refers to the debentures which a company has borrowed or has procured from the public equity on the other hand is a mix of preference shares and equity shares debentures can also be understood as long term secured loans issued by a company where whereas equity and preference shares of an organization can be considered as wealth of the organization when we join two of the words together we get capital structure so capital structure is designing the capital of the organization which has been procured through way of debenture equity shares preference shares in such a way that they give us a good financial structure which gives an organization highest of profitability lowest of losses and utmost utilization of resources capital structure can also be denoted as a mix of equity share capital preference share capital debentures retained earnings of the organization short term loans borrowed from any of the outside organizations or we also call it as external commercial borrowings short term loans taken within the country and a retained earning of the company or we can also talk it as a serve reserves or surplus of the company together it makes capital structure of the company an optimum capital structure of the company reflects the financial structure of the company also so we say that capital structure of a company should be in the ratio of 2 is to 1 that is debt of the company should be 2 whereas equity of the company should be 1 moving further understanding the same concept with the help of an illustration take an example a company requires 10 lakh for diversification and expansion purpose okay now over here a company can have n number of ways through which they can procure funds that is 10 lakh rupees the company has chosen that is a mix of debt and equity they have chosen a combination of the two they have chosen like this they want to procure equity shares then preference shares then debentures surplus of their own and then short term loans and borrowings from outside in this take an example when the company issues 4 lakh from equity shares 4 lakh from preference shares 2 lakh from debentures another 1 lakh from reserves and surplus of their own which we can also say it as retained earnings another 1 lakh they have procured from short term loans as i have already told you it also called as external commercial borrowings together the company's capital structure will come up to rupees 12 lakh okay but over here the company's capital structure in a definite way would only be a combination of equity shares preference shares and debentures that together summed up would be 10 lakh in hand
Second topic under financial management that we are going to discuss today is working capital management. Now, working capital management again can be understood as understanding three different perspectives of the same statement differently. Working is which keeps on going on on a daily basis. Capital again is the money employed by the company members and requirement is again arrangement of funds and resources. Now, when we are talking about capital, let's first understand the types of capital over here. Capital is the money employed by company members. Capital can be divided into two different parts. First is working capital management or we also can call it as a current capital or procurement of current assets. Then we have a long term capital or we also call it as a fixed capital. Understanding about working capital management, first we need to have a clear shot or a clear picture of what is working capital management over here, in which capital is very important for us all to understand. Capital, as I've told you, can be divided into two different parts. First is long term capital. Second is short term capital. Long term capital can be procuring fixed assets or permanent assets for the organization. Permanent assets or fixed assets for the organization can be plant and machinery, building, etc. Whereas short term capital for an organization can be the funds required for day to day production of the organization or day to day working of the organization. Example of short term capital can be purchase of raw material, funds which is set aside to give as wages to the employees, purchase of other raw materials, etc. So we can say that working capital management refers to the money required by the organization for day to day functioning of the organization. Whenever we say that raw materials are converted into finished goods, we say that working capital management is required over here. So working capital is nothing but the amount which is required for a company for day to day expenditure of the company. So now we know that working capital requirement or a working capital management can also be called as revolving capital or circulating capital. It is thus that financial need of an organization or a manufacturing concern wherein they require cash for day to day expenditures or for procuring current assets. Current assets are all such assets which can be converted into cash very quickly, which gives liquidity into the hands of manufacturing units or production houses. Now, understanding working capital management and requirement from a, per, a practical perspective. Practical perspective of any manufacturing concern says that a operating cycle is related with manufacturing of the product. How manufacturing of the product ex exactly takes place? First is procurement or acquisition of resources. Let's understand this particular terminology very well. Operating cycle of any organization refers to the period required by a company for converting raw materials into finished products. Okay. Over here, we need to understand three concepts very nicely. First is acquisition of resources. Second is manufacturing of the resources. Then third is understanding that those resources have been formed into finished product and then selling it in the outside market. The first part of it is acquisition of resources. Acquisition of resources, let's try to understand with an example. Take a company which is manufacturing a shirt. Okay. Now manufacturing in a shirt, what all raw materials do we require? First, we require a thread and a needle, fabric and other resources. Secondly, when all such resources have already been procured, we need to convert all such resources into a finished product. When we are converting or procuring all such resources and then converting into a finished product, we obviously need some cash for that. Why? Because we need certain machineries to convert all these raw materials into a finished product. Then we require certain amount to be kept aside, which we can give to laborers as wages. We require fuel. We require money for paying electricity bills and n number of other expenditures are attached with it. So we say that first we have procured the raw materials that is thread, needle, all other resources. Then we have tried to convert all such raw materials into the factory or in a production unit. While all such things are converted into a finished product, we are going outside the company and trying to sell it in the open market. When we are selling this finished product in an open market, obviously some cash is also required for us to sell it to retailers or to wholesalers. When we have given it to retailers, wholesalers, when we have sold to them, either we'll get cash out of it or it will be sold on credit. 
when we get cash out of it we have again a junk of money so that it can again be used as working capital requirement or working capital management and if we have credit sales it acts as a debt for the company but in both the ways our fund is manufact our fund is used in a very optimum way Isaac Newton is quite famous in history because he was able to discover gravity and even not so famous for giving us calculus but today we are here to understand the laws of motion given by Isaac Newton the first law of motion by Isaac Newton says an object continues to remain at rest unless acted upon by an external force however an object continuing in motion will continue to remain in motion unless acted upon by an external force a good example for this would be For example you're sitting in a bus and suddenly the driver were to hit the brake and when he hits the brake you move a few inches forward now there is a case where you are at a state of rest and all of a sudden when the brake has been applied the force of that is transferred to you and you move forward there is an example of the first law of motion in real life another example that i could consider is an object continues in motion unless acted upon by an external force For example let's imagine a world where there is no gravity whatsoever and you are playing basketball and you as you shoot through a basketball through the hoops and because there is no force like gravity to act upon it the ball which you are going to shoot will continue to remain in motion unless of course somebody is going to stop that particular ball that my friends is how the first law of motion actually works the second law of motion of Isaac Newton says the bigger the mass of the object the greater is the force that is needed to push the object or rather move the object a good example to understand this would be now let's say unfortunately your car has broken down and because of this you need to push your car to a particular distance if you are going to push that car you will see the car move very slowly because a car is a very heavy object and one person is not able to apply adequate force to push that car in a particular direction but let's say you are able to get the help of a friend or say two or three friends and all these people are helping you push that car the car is going to move faster that is a case of the second law of motion given by isaac newton the third law of motion given by isaac newton says every object when you apply a particular amount of force there is an equal and opposite force coming from that object an easy way to understand this would be when you fire a gun the recoil on that gun is the reverse action of the bullet going forward So when a bullet is being fired there is a force going towards that direction but in the opposite side you are able to see another side of force that is the recoil of that gun that is the third law of motion given by Isaac Newton